Hey everybody, today I'm talking about RevealX's machine learning architecture and how it works to keep your network safe. At a high level, RevealX sees conversations between machines over the wire. It collects packets and then it analyzes those packets to generate machine learning features, which it then sends over a secure connection to ExtraHop Cloud Services, where those features are analyzed with the power of ExtraHop Cloud Scale Machine Learning. You might have noticed that in this process, RevealX does not send individual packets to the cloud. This is because packet analysis is a very data intensive process. You want to extract data from those packets as close to the source as possible, and trying to send all those packets over the wire would be very inefficient. So instead, packets are analyzed on the sensor and turned into machine learning features. And features are sort of like the metrics you see in RevealX's dashboards and protocol pages. They contain measurable concrete data points that are extracted from the packets. Those features are sent to the cloud for analysis for a couple of reasons. One is that processing power on individual sensors is somewhat limited. Machine learning requires a lot of compute power, and in the cloud, the compute power employed can scale far beyond what's possible on individual sensors. Centralized processing also allows machine learning algorithms to be trained with information from all of your sensors. Machine learning is built on getting as many data points as possible, so combining information from multiple sources greatly improves the accuracy of results. And by optionally joining ExtraHop's Collective Threat Analysis Program, you can allow RevealX to train its machine learning algorithms on data combined from all sorts of ExtraHop customers. Let's take a look at how that machine learning works. The core of machine learning is founded on algorithms. However, there's no way to design a single algorithm that can ingest all available information to detect all possible threats. It's just not technologically feasible at the moment. Instead, RevealX relies on a variety of algorithms. Some of these algorithms ingest different types of data, and some of these algorithms feed into other algorithms. Now, it's not quite as straightforward as this diagram makes it look. There isn't a one-to-one -one relationship between algorithms and input. Algorithms can pull different types of data, and more than one algorithm can feed into another, uh, but you get the idea. Now, machine learning algorithms can be broken into two different categories, supervised algorithms and unsupervised algorithms. ExtraHop leverages both, since each is best for specific use cases. Supervised algorithms rely on labeled data sets. So in cybersecurity, this generally means indicating benign activity versus malicious activity. The downside is that in cybersecurity, these sorts of large data sets that identify malicious activity can be hard to come by, though there are some use cases where it's possible. For example, there are plenty of publicly available lists of safe domains you can trust and unsafe domains that are known to have been generated by a domain generation algorithm, or DGA. Still, for cybersecurity, algorithms tend to be unsupervised, or at least partially unsupervised. Instead of labeled data that identifies malicious versus benign, unsupervised algorithms ingest raw data and are trained to identify statistical anomalies in that data. Of course, when these statistical anomalies are discovered, the level of certainty is not as high as it would be for labeled data. Reporting on every anomaly will quickly turn your product into an alert cannon, which is unfortunately what a lot of security vendors end up doing these days. After all, every Mac on the network suddenly downloading a large file might well be a statistical outlier, but it also might just be the result of a new Mac OS update. This is why RevealX leverages ExtraHop's in-depth knowledge of network behavior and cyber attacks to guide unsupervised machine learning. Now let's take a look how some of those guided algorithms work. RevealX's algorithms are broken into three subsystems which each feed into the other. The first subsystem is perception, which is about discovering network architecture and identifying assets and users on the network. Next, the detection subsystem identifies suspicious activity on the network. And finally, the investigation subsystem collects all of the relevant information together and presents it to users. Let's start with perception, since that's the first one. RevealX uses a variety of algorithms to gain knowledge of the network. For example, RevealX will study the relationships between different machines. Specifically, it will look for which machines talk to the public internet and which machines only talk to each other. From this information, RevealX can infer network segments, identifying both external services and those that are only available to specific machines. RevealX also watches out for sets of devices that all behave similarly and groups these devices together for analysis. Similarly, RevealX can watch communication patterns between devices to develop device profiles, such as identifying mobile phones. RevealX can also identify entities by analyzing authentication and access patterns over a variety of protocols, such as LDAP and Kerberos and SMB. These behaviors can indicate that a user possesses special access on the network and is something like a network IT or domain admin. 
Revealex can also analyze interactive traffic patterns, such as those that take place over VPNs. When a user talks to a resource behind a VPN, Revealex can use machine learning to correlate the external IP address of that user with the internal IP address of the VPN client, keeping track of the conversation despite the changing IP addresses. Armed with this in-depth knowledge of the network, RevealX is then able to identify potential threats with its detection algorithms. At a high level, time series analysis allows RevealX to predict which behaviors are expected and which ones are not. And this is an area where RevealX's unique knowledge of network behavior comes into play, because not all changes in network activity require investigation, and reporting on every anomaly will leave us with an alert cannon which we don't want. So for example, if a machine suddenly goes from making a few requests to making a lot of requests, RevealX knows that the protocol is very important here. A big change in, say, HTTP traffic, assuming there isn't anything special about it and the only thing different is the volume, isn't really that unusual, and the potential for it to be linked to an attack is relatively low. However, if changes in behavior involve something like LDAP, that could be worrisome. LDAP servers contain information about file shares and user accounts on the network, and clients can access this information over the LDAP protocol. Unfortunately, attackers can also use LDAP to locate valuable assets and privileged user accounts on the network as part of a larger attack campaign, and tools like Bloodhound send out lots of LDAP requests to obtain this information. So if a machine suddenly starts sending an abnormal number of LDAP requests, that might indicate that the machine has been compromised and is being used for reconnaissance, which is why RevealX reports these kinds of events with spike in LDAP request detections, which include information about how these kinds of attacks work and how to mitigate them. And similar to that kind of time series analysis, RevealX can also analyze the network as a graph, which enables it to recognize potential outliers. And at a more granular level, a lot of the detection algorithms build on the paradigms from the perception subsystem. For example, when similar machines are grouped together, RevealX builds predictive models for the group's behavior, and behavior that is atypical for that group can be cause for further investigation. RevealX also watches out for unusual behavior according to device classification. If a device suddenly behaves in a way that is unexpected for that type of device, RevealX will notice it. Again, this kind of analysis relies heavily on RevealX knowledge of network behavior. In the example pictured here, a VoIP phone that has historically talked over SIP is suddenly communicating over SSH. But what about that change is worth noting? If, for example, the phone had been using SIP for its whole life, and then RevealX suddenly saw something over RTSP, would RevealX alert on that behavior too? Well, RevealX knows that VoIP phones typically communicate over SIP or RTSP. SIP is for peer-to-peer -peer streaming, while RTSP is more for broadcast traffic. But they're both pretty common, it's just that different apps tend to favor different protocols, and there's really nothing suspicious about a phone suddenly changing between the two. But what about SSH? Well, that's a bit different. SSH is a protocol that's primarily used for facilitating remote access between two machines. It enables you to open a terminal on the remote machine and execute commands. SSH is a very common protocol for communication between desktops and servers on the network, but what's not common is for someone to SSH into an IoT device, especially a VoIP phone. And unfortunately, while there aren't a lot of legitimate use cases for SSH with a VoIP phone, there are a lot of ways attackers can use it to leverage IoT devices as part of a campaign, which is why this kind of activity will trigger RevealX's unusual IoT protocol activity detection, which will tell you how these kinds of attacks work and how to stop them. And by leveraging network segmentation analysis, RevealX can identify behavior that breaks the inferred segmentation rules. This sort of monitoring is a lot less intrusive and more manageable than traditional network segmentation. While you can enforce network segmentation policy and prevent traffic across segments, it's a very manual process and can easily become misconfigured as your systems scale, which can lead to connectivity issues that are difficult to resolve. RevealX also models the behavior of individual users, building predictive models based on those users' behaviors. So if a user suddenly starts behaving out of character, RevealX will notice it. And of course, the devil is in the details here. Not all anomalous user activity is worth looking into, which is why RevealX uses its knowledge of network security to surface the most potentially dangerous behaviors. Uh, for example, the unusual access of network services is usually worth checking out, even if an environment is authenticating users with something like Kerberos. 
While Kerberos users are required to obtain and produce tickets when authenticating with the service, and this works well most of the time, it isn't foolproof. If an attacker gains control of a user account that doesn't have access to a service, they can use tools like Mimikatz to steal tickets from other user accounts that do in order to gain access to those services. So if a user is suddenly accessing a service that they haven't used before or don't usually access, it could indicate that the account has been compromised by an attacker, which is why RevealX is on the look out for this sort of thing with its unexpected service access detections, which let you know how you can protect your environment while you're investigating further. Last, there's the investigation subsystem. After a VLX identifies suspicious behavior, it uses machine learning algorithms to provide information to users so they can make the right call as quickly as possible. So for example, let's say RevealX notices a data transfer between two machines that happens to be suspiciously large. It will then begin pulling relevant factors from that event, such as the user that made the request, the IP address of the client machine, the SQL statement that initiated the transfer, especially the table that was pulled from. RevealX also leverages machine learning techniques to prioritize a variety of different detections so users know which detections are most dangerous and where they should start investigating first. RevealX also leverages ExtraHop's knowledge of known bad actors to enrich the information it reports. When it comes to external clients, it can be hard to know the good guys from the bad, but with ExtraHop's extensive knowledge of IP address and hostname reputations, RevealX is able to call out known bad guys so you can pay extra close attention to them. Finally, RevealX pulls all of this information into its detection cards that also include relevant metrics, records, and packets, and explain how the attack works, where it occurred, and what steps should be taken next. And that, in a nutshell, is how RevealX's machine learning algorithms work. I hope this has been enlightening. Thanks for watching.